Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Andrew and this is Reissued. If you're not new here, you know that I have some deep set desire to customize every single thing in my life. So this week is no exception. We're gonna be painting on some rugs. So there are a couple reasons why you might want to paint a rug. Number one, rugs in general are expensive. So if you're gonna have a big rug for your space, it's already gonna be pricey, but if you want like a cool designery looking thing, you're paying for the rug and for the designery look. So painting can be a great way to sort of achieve that high and look at a lower price point. Also, if you're like me, sometimes I get an idea in my head about what I want something to be and I shop and shop and shop and I can't find that. So painting is a great way to get a totally custom look that no one's ever seen before. And then finally, maybe you already have a rug on hand or you thrifted a rug that has some stains on it. So uh, one of the rugs that we're painting today is from Goodwill. I picked it up for $20, great price. When I bought it in the store, it was all rolled up. Uh, when I got it home and unrolled it, it definitely had some stains on it. I tried to kind of clean it and treat the stains, and I think I may or may not have just made the problem worse. But the plan all along was to paint this rug, so I am going to sort of strategically place my design so that I cover up all of that staining and give this rug some new life, which is exciting. So in this video, we're going to be painting that thrifted rug, and then we're also going to be painting a doormat that I picked up at Ikea, just a standard new plain doormat. I just think I could do something a little bit more exciting with it, so why not do that as well? Before we get started, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button, stick around, join the party. Here we go, let's do it. I threw a poll up over on Instagram to see what you guys were feeling for this design. One was a Bauhaus inspired rounded print with lots of circles, and the other was a wood grain that was really inspired by this blue dot rug that I've been obsessed with forever. <laughs> Even though more people were interested in the Bauhaus look, I thought that the wood grain design would work better to cover up the stains on the rug and would feel a little bit more organic in the space. This rug is going to go in my kitchen, and right now in that design, everything feels very square and angular, and so I think it could really benefit from some kind of softer curves. All right, so I have laid out the rug on a shower curtain here. I have my design prepared. I selected a reference image and then I scaled it to the proportions of this rug. And then I have laid a grid over the top of it so that I can work from a grid. I always find that's really helpful in keeping the proportions correct as we lay out the design. And so now I'm gonna go in with some painter's tape and mark the halfway points and the quarter marks so that I can reference those when uh, using my grid and paint on my design. So now that I have my grid laid out, I'm gonna take a look at my design on my computer and see the best way to orient it so that uh, all of the darker parts that I'm gonna paint will cover the stains. Well, not all, but most. Um, again, I might have to fudge the design a little bit here and there to make those stains get covered or blended at least, um, but better to place the design in a way that it sort of naturally covers the stains as much as possible, you know? For this rug, I'm using a black satin latex paint that I had left over from another project. I pulled a couple of different brushes since I wasn't sure what I would need, but I only ended up using the very stiff one inch-ish brush. The best general technique I found for this rug type and design was to sketch in the shapes I wanted with very little paint on my brush. Then load up my brush and swirl the paint down into the fibers. Finally, I load up my brush with water and pass over the area again in order to dilute the paint a little bit to help it reach tough areas and spread out a little. This will also keep the paint from being super stiff when it dries. It will still have some stiffness, but the more watered down the paint is, the softer it will be. I could have just added the water to my paint directly, but I like the control of being able to dilute the paint more selectively. As I go, I'm referencing the intersection point of my tape marks and noting how those points on my grid line up with the design in my reference image. This design is very forgiving and I definitely messed up some areas as compared to my reference image, but the overall effect is there, so no stress. 
quick little thought here. The level of detail that you'll be able to achieve on your design kind of depends on the pile of the rug. So on the jute rug that I'm painting this time, it's a little bit more textured, so I'm not able to achieve quite the level of detail that I was able to achieve when I actually painted the same design on a rug like 10 years ago. This rug is kind of on its last legs, it's on its way out of my house, but um, for now it's still here and you can see that I was able to achieve a lot more details in the grain of the wood uh, than I was this time around with the jute rug. Um, so just keep that in mind when selecting a rug to paint. All right, everybody, we're back. Day two, we are painting the doormat. I was kind of racking my brain this morning for ideas of how to paint the doormat. Whenever I need ideas, I always head up Instagram and kind of ask around there, see what people are feeling. I thought since everyone was really into the Bauhaus look for the kitchen rug, that I would kind of do that here instead, but change it up a little bit. So uh, the design that I was thinking of for that was just black and white. Um, but since I'm out of black paint, and since I've already done that on the chair and it feels like I don't really want to do it again. I would change it up a little bit. And so I found this design and I thought it would be a really fun way to incorporate some color. Um, I have some paint on hand from different rooms uh, around the house. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool on your way into the house to kind of see the palette right there on the doormat. So these are the colors that I'm thinking about here. Uh, this one has gone on the bathroom ceiling and it's going a couple other places. Kitchen cabinets, living room built-ins, general walls and trim around different parts of the house and then this color i got as a color fail mix on clearance at lowe's um, i thought it was such a pretty color i think it's this color it wasn't labeled but it looks the closest to this one from the magnolia line um, and I am really feeling the olive green for this. So I'm thinking that we can use these in such a way to keep the kind of original breakdown of the design, the different tone values and sort of colors, but make it more customized to my palette, which is pretty cool. Generally when drawing a circle, I try to find something that I already have that I can trace. Um, I could do the little like tie a pencil to a string and then draw the circle situation, but I think this is already gonna be kind of hard to draw and so better to find something that's a perfect circle and trace it. I happen to have this tray on hand, um, so we're gonna go with that. It seems to be about the right size. So I've kind of laid out the basics of my design with tape. The tape does not stick to this at all, so they're just kind of like placed there to get kind of an idea. I'm certainly not gonna try to just like paint over it like you would a stencil. I'm still gonna go in really carefully along the edge with my brush, but it's good to kind of be able to lay the placement out and get some nice straight lines there. So I think we're good to start going in with paint. So I opened up the green paint and it's not quite as saturated as I thought it was. I think I thought it was a different color than it is. Um, maybe that's just how it looks because it's light, um, because it's not dried yet, but I was already on the fence about it being bright enough to kind of be the yellow of my color scheme. Um, so I don't know. I feel like I might just go with it and see what happens. And if not, I can kind of brighten it up a little bit. I feel like I want to have that green on there and that's the place where it makes the most sense to do it. So we're going for it. For each section of this rug, I found it was better to go in with a smaller, more precise angle brush first and draw a clear line outside using my tape and my pencil markings as a reference. I want this line to be very clean and deliberate. So even though this brush is a bit soft to really dig into the fibers of the mat, it gives me the most control to get a sharp edge. Then I switch over to the same brush I used on the other rug to fill in. Instead of the swirling motion that I used on the woven jute rug, this rug seemed to do better with the tapping motion, pressing the paint deep into the coarse fibers. So now we tap. I think this combination of colors worked really nicely with the warm brown fibers of the rug. Without those exposed parts, I think the color scheme might have been a bit too cool overall. 
In my home design, I'm being sure to always pair these cool colors with nice warm wood tones to help them feel balanced. I didn't have a lighter mid-tone color in my home color scheme at the moment, so I pulled out this soft gray color sample that I had bought to cover holes in the wall in my old apartment. Contractor gray. I'm not really feeling the light gray as a whole these days for interior design, but I think it worked fine for this. With a little more planning, I might have had a better strategy for which colors to do first to avoid peeling and moving tape. But the way I started toward the center and worked my way out seemed to work okay. It was tough on the borders between very similar colors to achieve that super clear line, since it was hard to distinguish exactly where new paint met old paint, especially with the new paint being lighter when wet. I tried my best to visualize the line even when I had filled in up to it, so as not to go over the edge. After everything dried, I noticed that for the darker colors, I might have benefited from coming back with a second coat at the end, but I can always do that later, especially after the rug goes through a little wear and tear. That's the other thing that I love about painting on rugs. You can always just go in for a touch up to cover any new stains or any areas that get worn. Okay, so I just finished these rugs up and I can't wait to show you how they look. Keep in mind here that we're still in process with both the front porch and the kitchen. The kitchen's almost there, just a couple things, just a little sneak preview for you there. But the porch, just picture that that door is beautiful, stripped down wood and not red and orange. So this before and after is a little bit interactive. I get to show you what I made and you get to use your imagination and fill in the rest of the picture here. If you enjoyed this video, as always, hit the like button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.